So I guess there are only a few people that can get me to break my October scary movie binge, one of them being Martin Scorsese next week with Killers of the Flower Moon, and apparently Taylor Swift, because I went to a theater tonight and watched a concert movie instead of watching horror, which is what my body and soul needs and craves right now. But the thing is, the Taylor Swift era's tour concert film has become kind of a moment. This is what all movies want. Really anything that could be sold to the public, but especially movies, you want to be a moment. Barbie and Oppenheimer earlier this year, the two of them becoming Barbenheimer, was a moment, and everyone felt like they had to go see it because it was part of the culture. Everyone was doing it. Even people who didn't want to go to the movies or hadn't gone to the movies since the pandemic were going to the movies to see both Barbie and Oppenheimer. Both of those films were good, and both of them raked in tons of money. The Taylor Swift concert film, randomly coming out on October 13th, Friday the 13th, no less, in the middle of spooky season, without any warning, forcing Exorcist Believer to vacate its original release date and just blowing every other movie out of the water and making millions of dollars in pre-sales is an insane fucking moment for all of us. And that's why I went to see the movie. And you guys know me, if it's in theaters, I do try to see it. But when it comes to like these theatrical cultural moments that feel like they're here and gone and then we miss them, I always feel like I have to take part in it. So, of course, I went to see the film with my buddy tonight. I would say going into the film, I was a casual listener to her catalog. I respected her a lot as an artist, but I couldn't name my favorite song of hers and could probably only name about two or three off the top of my head. Going out of the film, though, I would say that the movie made me a fan. She's incredibly talented as a songwriter and as a performer. Her stage presence, too, is filled with such infectious joy. You can really feel that she's having a great time out there. But the show itself is a true sight to behold. The costume changes, her background dancers, the monstrous screens displaying really amazing imagery, but also the sets the cabin or the piano covered in moss, and really the gargantuan weight of the material because the whole idea of this era's tour is that it spans everything, all of her hits, her entire catalog. And even if you weren't really a Taylor Swift fan or, or even don't like her at all, it's really hard to listen to all of those songs knowing how much she took part in creating them and not recognize her talent. But I think the two big things that Taylor Swift has done over the years that have truly impressed me is what she did with her catalog and making sure that she owned it and then literally re-releasing it with new recordings. I think that is so inspiring and even important for artists everywhere who are usually reliant on the system. Uh, don't bite the hand that feeds you kind of thing. Like, you need us more than we need you. It's a thing that all artists go through. Everyone feels like they have to go through this insane gauntlet of agents and managers and execs and people in suits and red tape just to get something made, something out there to, that they have to say. And there's a million people trying to make sure they get their 10%. And I love that she was able to retain her catalog in that way, similar to how Britney Spears has been freed from her father's financial control. And the other thing, and perhaps my favorite, is that with the release of this film, the deal completely bypassed all movie studios and distributors and all of the normal routes you're supposed to take and was just made with theaters. And that's why Blumhouse freaked out and moved Exorcist Believer earlier and everyone vacated that slot and got out of Taylor Swift's way. Once again, we're in this place that movies that are becoming very successful, even concert films, are not taking the standard route. If someone says this is the only way you can do it, and then someone like Taylor Swift in her concert film comes along and says, actually, you could just do it this way, that opens up the door for tons of indie artists to try to bypass that system too and just make deals with movie theaters. It makes more people go to the theaters and it keeps less creative people who had no hand in your film at all from making money off of you. Like every studio exec hates that that happened. Every filmmaker I talk to loves that this happened. But back to the film itself, it really does feel like you're there. I mean, better than being there. I like going to the occasional concert, but honestly, looking for parking, parking in a parking deck five miles away, surrounded by sweaty people for four hours, waiting in line, spending huge amounts of money, and then squinting to see anything. Sometimes it's really not the best experience. Watching this movie, you do feel like you are right there front and center. And Sam Wrench, the director, has chosen all of the most effective 
and evocative angles that he could cut to throughout this concert. And it's funny because, like I said, I could really only name like a handful of songs that she had made going into the film. But after the movie, I was like, yeah, I got to listen to like that song again and that song again. And I really felt like listening to more of her music. And so the film does everything it's supposed to. Hardcore fans are going to freak out for this movie. Obviously, it's going to be a love letter to all of them. But even people who weren't really devoted Taylor Swift fans are going to find things to enjoy. Or you might hate it, in which case, just don't go. Like, you know what I mean? This also made me realize that more concert films should be coming out. I mean, Stop Making Sense is in re-release right now. Beyonce announced that she wants to do one too. But what about like older concert films that have already happened that are just on DVD that could really use an HD or even 4K remaster? Like Michael Jackson's Wembley tour, for instance. Like that is a gold mine of incredible cinematic material. Dire Straits Alchemy concert. Throw that up on the big screen. That's amazing music. There are so many great concerts from the past that could definitely be re-released, and I feel like people would show up. I mean, this is a two-hour and 45-minute movie that's rated PG-13 with the most F-bombs I've ever heard in a PG-13 movie, by the way. I was thinking about that while watching it, because back in the day, I used to think that As Good As It Gets had the most because that's PG-13 and it had three F-bombs. I remember all this shit because of the way I was raised, because I had to like catalog these types of things. Like, you're not allowed to watch that, Chris, because it has one, two, three F-words. And I'd be like, well, great. It's just the stupid things my brain thinks about while I'm watching Taylor Swift concert films. Anyway, guys, I really had a good time with this, and the crowd that I saw it with did too. I mean, people were like really into it, and I do feel like it's one of those kind of moments. And I get that it's not the same as Barbenheimer, but... This is something that is legitimately saving the fall movie season right now. And I'm glad that I saw it in a theater. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos in my 11th annual Halloween special. I've been posting a ton and I'm really proud of those videos. I work hard on those, so please do check them out. Thank you guys as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.